Hello and welcome to this Blackwell Online podcast. My name is George Miller, and my guest today is David Peace, whom I met up with to talk about the second book in his Tokyo trilogy, Occupied City, which has just appeared in paperback. Like its predecessor, Tokyo Year Zero, set at the end of World War II, this book's starting point is a true crime. In this case, the poisoning of 16 people in a Tokyo bank in 1948. But the ripples, as always in PC's work, go far beyond the crime itself, taking in Japan's occupation of China and its biological weapons program, as well as the Americans' presence in Japan as occupying power after the war. The fragmented nature of the city is captured in what one reviewer called brilliantly rendered, savagely broken staccato prose. I started by asking David about the Hirosawa case, on which the book is based. Is it a crime that everybody in Japan knows about, I wondered, a part of cultural folk memory? Yeah, uh, yes. I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say probably everybody, but I, I, I came across it, though, through a book called um, Shocking Crimes of Post-War Japan. Th- th- this is where I also found the, the case for, the, for Tokyo Year Zero and also the, the, the case that will be um, resurrected, the third book. But the Kodaira case in Tokyo Year Zero is, is quite obscure. And, and it's not part of, as you say, folk memory. But the, the, the Teigen jiken, the, the, the Teigen incident, as it's known in Japan, is very much part of folk memory, um, mainly because there's an ongoing campaign to clear posthumously the name of a man who was convicted of the crimes. And that man remained in prison till he was 95. Yes, and, and, he, di- and, and he died on death row of natural causes and I believe holds some kind of record as the person who's lived longest on death row without ever being executed. The, the man who was his lawyer, his son actually then became Hirasawa's adopted son because of the technicality in the law, I think you have to be a, a relative or a family member in order to, 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 keep the, to keep an appeal process going after someone has died. And so um, Hirasawa's adopted son continues to campaign to clear um, his adopted father's name. And, and so, you know, on, on, on the anniversary of a crime in January every year, there is some kind of, you know, demonstration or, or, or feature on TV here is Sao of a man as well who was who was who was convicted and as obviously I believe wrongly convicted of the crime was also an artist and once a year there's an exhibition in Tokyo of, of his artwork again in order to try to raise public interest in in the in the issue. So can you say just what the bare bones of this crime were and mm. what in particular attracted you as a novelist to it? It's occupied Japan. It's um January 1948, the city is being rebuilt, but it's still much of it in ruins. Disease is is still very much rife. The Americans are a presence, but actually in terms of interaction with the general population, it's quite minimal. They they stick to their own areas and they are presence they're a presence in that they're they're in trucks and, and, and driving around. They're a military presence. A man walks into a bank in in the Ikibukuro area of Tokyo. He is Japanese, but he is wearing the armband that marks him as a member of the occupation, in that he's representing the occupation. He says he is a doctor. He says there has been an outbreak of dysentery in the area. He says that he needs to give each member of the bank the, 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 the antidote, the medicine that, will, that will, will inoculate them against the dysentery. This is after the bank's closed. The assistant manager gathers the 16 people around the, the doctor pours out the medicine in 16 teacups. Within minutes, 10 are dead instantly. Two then die later in hospital and four people survive. Some money went missing from the bank, but by no means all the money. And again, this is, this, this is again open to debate about, I mean, because the, the crime scene was so open, it's not clear whether actually this so-called doctor took the money or whether actually just neighbours or policemen could have taken it. Fast forwarding six months to the August of 48, a man called Hirasawa, a slightly known painter, is arrested and charged. He first confesses and then denies it. And as we said earlier, he's, he's sentenced to death but never executed and dies many, many years later of natural causes. What you know attracted me to it from, from a point of view of writing a novel about it was that I felt that, well, I feel strongly if you're going to write about crime, you, you have to have, I think, something beyond a kind of voyeuristic interest in the crimes and the deaths and and, and so on. You you can argue that all crimes, to some extent, say something about the society in which they're created in, but I think some crimes say much more than others. 
and I felt that this crime provided a way of looking at again a city under occupation about what it means to be I mean to, to backtrack a little bit to, with Tokyo Year Zero to me it was to write about what it was to be a city in a time of defeat this to me is a book about what it is to be a city under occupation the, 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 you know the defeat the occupation had, had led to a situation where you had like I mean to be very literal about it there was disease was rife in the city these people drank this medicine because they believe that this man was part of the occupation, that he came with the authority of the occupation, and that he then, you know, was going to cure them and, and save them from this illness. And, and so they, 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 they took his words on trust and did as he asked because he represented the occupation. So, you know, again, this couldn't really have happened without the occupation. I also think the way in which conspiracies have formed around the case and this is one of the reasons why I use 12 different narrators to tell the story the very many conspiracies that have formed around it again said a lot about the, uh, about the occupation you know and, and generally about the way we talk about crimes and, uh, in, in, in society in, in present day society you know some people believe the Americans were complicit in the crime some people believe that the, the crime was linked to the Japanese bacteriological warfare unit when they themselves were the occupiers in China and that the Americans which, which and this, this we do know to be true that the Americans um, took the information that, that the Japanese bacteriological warfare scientists had gained through experiments on civilians in China and they took this information and used it themselves for their own research and, and then gave the Japanese scientists and soldiers involved in the, in what, in the atrocities in China, they gave them basically a free pass. Some people think that the, that the Russians were somehow involved in it and the, um, again there's the, there's the start of a Cold War, it, it's played out almost f through the crime. So there's many different dimensions to the crime, and so obviously, it's. I think that the crime says says some, there's something more to the crime than if you like, simply, twelve murders, um, and that's not to dismiss the victims who I think are central to the novel. And I keep bringing it back to the victims because at the end of the day, despite all the conspiracies, twelve people died.